Okay, on third and four, he'll look to throw. In zone, Moore! Touchdown, Jets! Mike White, how about him? The Fantasy Edge with Richard Seville and Dennis Sosick. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge for week 13. I'm Richard Seville of FantasySixPack.net and joining me shortly, as usual, Dennis Sosick, also of FantasySixPack.net. And uh, this week we will have Peng's Picks a little later in the show with Davis Peng. And uh, so we will take a look at uh, the waivers and uh, talk a little bit about week 12 and... Uh, See what uh, see what we can get. We're getting closer and closer to uh, playoff time. But uh, before we do all that, we've got to bring in Dennis. Hey, Dennis. How's it going, man? Hey, Richard. How are you? How was um, your Thanksgiving weekend? It was okay. It was good. Good. Nice and tasty. Good. Very tasty. There you go. There you go. Tasty and delicious. Yeah. Lots of uh, lots of good food. And, there you go. Uh, and and uh, yeah, it was good. Mm-mm-mm. So, are you, uh, are you one of the unfortunate souls that had faced against Josh Jacobs this week? No, I was not. I did not have to face uh, Josh Jacobs. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, you know that's something I, I wanted to check the stats of him after uh, the uh, after the game. But I didn't, so I'm going to look at them right now and relate it to our audience for other people like myself who did not uh, start Josh Jacobs or did not own Josh Jacobs. And uh, who, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, gee, didn't, didn't uh, I mean, if you uh, had Miles Sanders, it was kind of, kind of the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, Miles Sanders had a great game, but Jacobs was, uh, yeah, just the way he did it too with that, you know, run, uh, kind of a walk-off run. I know. Overtime, that was ridiculous. Uh, I mean, he, you know, I, we came into, at least I came into the season thinking that you know, he was going to be kind of an afterthought in that offense, but. You know, he, he's proven a lot of people wrong and especially Josh McDaniel who you know, kind of, you know, didn't want to resign him, didn't want to extend him. So yep. now, you know, he's playing for the money and he's, he's blowing up. I mean, he's unstoppable out there. They keep feeding the ball and he keeps pounding the rock and putting up stats, unbelievable stats that are, you know, winning a lot of people some, you know, their, their leagues every week. So, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't take him. I fortunately I had to face in one of my main leagues where I needed to win. I had to face Jacobs and Garrett Wilson. Um, and, and I, and no matter what I did, I wouldn't have to beat that. So, uh, uh-huh. I took a big L for that. So, yeah, but, you know, that's it rough. happens, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, but otherwise, uh, you know, fans who yeah. are okay, except for that one, 40, that one league, I should say. 45 half PPR fantasy points. It's ridiculous. It's enormous. Uh, 229 yards, um, 74 receiving. Um, yeah, it's a uh, clear number one, but, uh, I mentioned briefly Miles Sanders. He wasn't too shabby either. He uh, he was the number two, and he got uh, he got thirty. And that's nothing to say. I mean those those. I mean <laughs> touchdowns. You know, he, uh, that's a lot. A lot of touchdowns. Right. And, right. Uh, so, uh, so two for a guy who didn't score any last year. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, you know, he was going to have some positive regression there, just a matter of how many. And he's just, you know, that offense is, you know, Jalen Hurts is phenomenal. So he's, the offense is clicking. Yeah. Some positives there too for, I mean, even if you owned Aaron Jones, you did all right. Um, you know, he was, he, he scored a, he scored a touchdown and, and got nearly a hundred, uh, scrimmage yards. So. Yeah. I mean, you did all right in that game. Even so, Dylan scored too. Shockingly, enough. that's right. Shockingly, Dylan came to life <laughs> out of the. Right, I traded him away. And he freaking scores. You know, so what do you? Get? Well, yeah. you can kind of call yeah, it an outlier. Com- oh, you- absolutely. Yeah. So, so you know, waited forever for him to do something. I'm like, man, I got to get rid of him. So I moved him. But just the point. You know, I, right. I it's been three straight games of this Christian Watson. You know, but you know, for some reason, I still don't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I know it's well, I know it's three straight games, but it just I don't know. It just doesn't feel like uh, I don't know. Well, he's talented. He's got. I mean, the the touchdown he scored. You know, the long the one that where he just put on the afterburns. You know, 
Right. And, uh, you know, he just tore up the field and just beat, you know, just ran past everybody. That's, I mean, that wasn't Rogers. That was, uh, that was love. Love took over for Rogers. And that's something we've got to talk about too is, uh, right. is the news. And, uh, and I think that's maybe where we should start is actually, uh, with Aaron Rodgers and, uh, and uh, what what's gonna happen with him? Um, I didn't, didn't get any word about him today. Dennis. No, I'm uh, surprised. You're right. I didn't see anything either. But I mean, you could tell he was uh, he was in a lot of pain. And you know, I mean, I, you know, that Packers ain't going anywhere. So I mean, is it not now? He no. He'll want to play. You know, what I mean, he'll want to play. But I mean, they need to see what Love can do. And uh, you know, it's a tricky situation for them. Yeah, they you know? they had to win against Philadelphia. Or it was it was done. I mean, even even right. so, it was a long shot. I mean, they, they're still. They're, I think the math still has them able to get in, but you know, they yeah, need they need shot. they need everything to to go right for them. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, no news on Aaron Rodgers. He's probably. I think. Do you think let's just shut him down? Because I mean, he's got that. Yeah. He's got those other issues too, with the thumb and, and finger. You know, right? Yeah, I think they. I think they will. I doubt that he'll want to, though. That's the thing. I mean, you know, he's kind of a. He's a strange guy, but he is a gamer. He wants to be out there, so um, I think he'll want to play. Whether you know they let him play based on you know no chance in the playoffs is one other story, but. I think they'll do whatever he wants, and we'll see what happens. You know? mm, but, it's looking more and more like he's going to end up like Breeze with just the one Super Bowl. Yeah, probably. So, I mean, I guess it must be hard. You know, they see Brazy, Brady, you know, getting all those. You know, he's got Super Bowl. He's dripping with Super Bowls. <laughs> and, right. and, uh, and they've only got this. Well, they should be happy they got one. Dan Marino never got one. Yeah. Yeah, Marino was a hell of a quarterback. Unfortunately, he isn't. He couldn't succeed with no running game uh, to speak of there. So I mean, he, he never was, got uh, one. He was a gunslinger, but that's, that's yeah. what the terrible thing is is that Jim Plunkett got a t- got a got a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, <He's laughs> and Dan Marino didn't career. get one. And Jim Plunkett was a well, I don't. know. Jim Plunkett was a uh, okay. He's a Joe Cap. <laughs> Joe Cap, you and Joe Cap. I gotta, I gotta mention Joe Cap at least once. I didn't mention him last year, but uh, I know, I know, I know. I got, but uh, now that we're getting more into the cold weather times, well, I don't know. Well, the Minnesota, they well, they don't play at the Met anymore, obviously, but <laughs> right. but anyway, uh, but uh, anyhow, uh, let's move along and talk more quarterbacks. Uh, guess what? Guess who's coming to town on? Uh, Next week, yeah. again. well, it's not. Uh, he's coming to. I think it's at the Texans. Yeah, it's at, yeah, he's correct. So uh, Deshaun Watson, they actually, uh, they actually dropped the quarterback just to just to get him on the squad. So he's playing. He's going to come in. and He's going to play the Texans. Why this makes sense to me, I don't know. The re- first of all, the Browns are out of it. But they say, but well, maybe it, maybe it's a good idea to just give him some, give him a couple of games. And uh, but I mean, is it worth the risk to you know this guy's going to be your uh, franchise quarterback? A lot of people aren't happy about it on Twitter. Like it's still going on about the you know about the lawsuits and everything and all this. It's it's it's. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of whole mess. It's quite a yeah. It's a big legal mess, yeah. and people aren't happy. You know. And Twitter are still screaming about it and they're saying like, you know, the NFL and they weren't, they weren't too happy about fantasy people either. This <laughs> kind of gets, gets us in trouble a little bit. Of course. And, uh, I always blame the fantasy guys. Yeah. Always blame the Thank fantasy you. guys. You know, you guys aren't thinking about the, you don't, aren't thinking of those poor girls and, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of a disgrace that, uh, you know, at least to, in my mind, you know, for Cleveland to even push to have him out there. I mean, you know, it seems kind of, you know, it's not very uh, coincidental that he's playing against Houston in his first game. And, you know, that suspension length is just happened to coincide with the fact that he's playing Houston this week. I, I don't think that's, uh, you know, it's not by accident. I think it's all planned that way by the NFL. But in any event, I, I still don't think he should be playing um, you know, this year. I mean, the problems, like you said, are not going anywhere. And he's going to be a rust. He hasn't played in a couple of years. What are they going to gain out of it except for just you know, get his feet wet back in the game? Um, we could do that next year. You know, why risk it this year? For all the money they poured into him and draft capital they did as well. Yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's worth uh, risking him. But you know, they want to show their shiny new toy, and I think he's going to play. But um, I don't think it's really worth him being out there. No, it isn't. Exactly from what you said, all the money they sold out and all the rest of it, you know. So it's just, it doesn't make any sense. But 
We've got to knock off a little rust, perhaps, and uh, I'm not saying, like, even though we saw two, uh, the Titan, the Texans aren't lightweights, even though we saw two, uh, you know, just steamroll over them. And, you know, we got half the game off practically. Right. You know, yeah. and, uh, which I don't think that'll be with Deshaun Watson. I think he'll be out there for the full 60, but I mean, the Texans aren't, I just don't, I think the Texans just, well, it was, it was actually bad for me because I started two and one I mean, it didn't, it didn't harm me any because, because the, the, the guy I was against was, his team was worse, but, uh, but <laughs> the thing, yeah, which is always good. But, uh, yeah. the thing is, is, uh, it, when you get these lopsided matchups where it's like, like we saw this too with, uh, Minnesota and Dallas the, the week previous. Yeah. Where, uh, Dallas got so far in front that they didn't have to, you know, you know, they, didn't, they could sit right. everybody. And then, and, and Minnesota, well, we might as well sit everybody. So. And it, and you only get three quarters of fantasy points out of it. And, and it's bad for even, cause you don't even get garbage time for the, for the team that's like on the short end of it. Sure. So. Yeah. You just got to hope your guys are, your players are part of that, uh, barrage of points. And if they're not, then you're done. I mean, yeah. You know, like I said, you start pulling people out, then what do you, you know, mm-hmm. um, you're, you're so well. So, um, yeah, I mean, that game was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so they got, I was actually kind of worried. Stop scoring. Come on. I was actually <laughs> hoping for the Texans to, 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 you know, I mean, they did sort of rally at the end. I mean, it was a bit of a, you know. Yeah, it's garbage points. Kind of, yeah. They did their own garbage thing, but it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was awful. Um, okay. I'm just going to go and buy the list here. Injury. Yeah. Darnell Mooney's out for the season. Uh, not that Mooney has done a whole lot. I've got him on every one of my fantasy teams, so he's getting cut. At this stage of the season, for what he's been, for what he's produced, I think there's like, no. You can count on one hand the number of games where he's had uh, decent right. fantasy outings. And uh, so it's really no big loss, Darnell Mooney, because, you know, I actually sat him this week knowing that, well, it was going to be Simeon. Well, I mean, it was even, it was even reported that it might even be uh, <laughs> Nathan Peterman. <laughs> and, I saw uh, and uh when I saw that, I thought, "Good grief, then I'm glad I'm sitting mooney you know, if it, I mean, I was even glad I was sitting mooney even with simeon simeon's i mean I mean he's a cut ahead of Nathan Peter, but not by much, not by much no and uh but the I don't know the bears have the worst backups in the league, really, they do yeah they they're not uh they don't have much talent on that team no, you know, no. I mean, Mo- yeah mooney was yeah you know, we had we talked about how Mooney was supposed to be a you know good sleeper coming into the season. Mm-hmm. You know, Fields is growing into his own. You know, Fields just started um, you know exploding on the scene. You know, but mostly rushing than passing. And yeah, Mooney Mooney took some uptick, but not enough to you know, worry about. You know, or be excited about. I should say. No, uh, um, you, know, you lose him now. It's like all right. I mean, just make sure. Now you know for sure he's never going to blow up, and you don't have to worry about cutting him. And you know, you worry about cutting him before. And then he blew up, and then you're like, oh, why did I do that? But now it's a no-brainer. I mean, it's not, he's not playing anywhere the rest of the year, so we can move on from him and hopefully pick up one of the guys we mentioned later. Yeah, I still think, uh, yeah, I don't see Chase Claypool on this list, but I think he's uh, Chase Claypool is a, you know, I think he's a flex option. Yeah, possibly. I get the ball. Well, you can you can put him in yeah, a flex. Yeah, there's someone there. Either him yeah. and Cole Komeda probably be the two. Two. Main benefactors there. Yeah, Pringle scored the touchdown, and, and there was uh, so. I mean, there there are some options, but I think I think Chase Claypool. I think you can put him in a flex. It, it kind of depends on uh, field too, but uh, right. Yep. Anyways, moving right along uh, on the list here. Oh, oh yes, the the Odell Beckham saga. He was kicked off a flight from. He's doing he's doing this uh, Antonio Brown type stuff now. <laughs> Like this is this is this is very very this is out of the playbook of uh, Antonio Brown, is it not? He got yeah, kicked off. Uh, he got kicked off of a flight from Miami to L.A. because he was he was I don't know he was sleeping on the plane. He wouldn't put on. He, I guess they woke him up and he was cranky and he didn't want to put on a seatbelt. So they kicked him off the plane. So you know it's just kind of some of the and and yet I read that the Cowboys are still intent on signing him. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I would I not, I would not want this guy on my team. He's, he's, this is, this is, this is, this is another one of these diva guys like Antonio Brown. Exactly. Isn't it? Yeah, I agree. 
He's always been like that. It's, he comes with a lot of baggage, that's for sure. And I'm surprised Dallas still wants to do it. I mean, they're just starting to, you know, I mean, they've been playing well, but their offense is clicking now. Why do you want to yeah. disrupt yeah. that with, I mean, they with don't, that noise? You know? Gallup, Gallup hasn't been great, I grant you that, but... He's coming along. He was. Don't forget, he was yeah, he, injured, and he's, he's sort of he's sort of starting to uh, put it. He looked a little better uh, the last game. Yeah, he played well on uh, on Thanksgiving. Yeah, he played well. Yeah, he got some he got a lot of points. I mean, he got a lot, but he got uh, I don't remember what he had six for sixty something. I forget something like that. I forget. Yeah, well, I can I can get that up yeah. just for our, for our audience here of what yeah, I mean, Gallup he, actually did. Go on, no, while yeah. I look that up. <laughs> keep, yeah. <laughs> keep the <laughs> show go- keep the show um, going man <laughs> yeah i mean it's still all fine i got him yeah. right he got uh uh no touchdowns uh he got he got uh, 63 63 yards on five catches that's t- close targeted eight times yeah so, so I mean, he's, he's getting fed the ball so i mean it's he's i mean he's getting like you said he's still recovering from injury and he's uh he's, he's you know his upside's there and yeah. Dalton schultz is still there He's, you know, he's a go-to guy for uh, Prescott. And, of course, you got Lamb, two backs. Um, yeah, I don't think, you know, adding Beckham, I don't think adds that much to the offense, especially with the headcase that he's exhibiting now. I'm not sure if he's, he's worth all the risk right now. But you see, this, this is what you got. This is what you get with Jerry Jones, you know. Jerry Jones gets <laughs> this. Get, he's got this little beetle inside his head, you know, and this little beetle keeps talking to him. And, you got, <laughs> and I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I tell you, the Cowboys, the I, you know what? And I, and I don't like to knock Jerry Jones because I've, I've heard him like he's a very, uh, he's a very sincere kind of guy. I've, I've, I've actually watched him, uh, in interviews and I, and I thought, geez, he's kind of a sweet guy. Why do I hate on him much? <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? So yeah. when you, when you see him in a different, uh, venue, uh, like on, like it was sort of an outside of football, just talking with him, you know? So it was, so I kind of have a little bit of a, you know what I mean. It's just that he's not a bad. He's not a. He's he's kind of a. He, I don't know. He just should. You should give up and be let someone else do the general manager thing. You know? so yeah, like, I agree. But he won't. No, he won't. No. It's his team, and he'll he'll continue to do so. So, anyways, he's he's still got his eyes on OBJ. Huh? But anyways. Yeah. Yeah, they look like the front runners to get them. Other teams have, have shown interest. I don't know who else. I forget. I looked at the list, but mainly because the Cowboys shone out the most because they're the ones. Right. Well, I that, saw the Chiefs were interested. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. And someone else that came on the other team, but I think it, oh the Giants, the Giants yeah. are still. With, oh yeah. There was yeah there was still one to bring them back. Yeah, he he, he won't want to go back there. No. They, they complained a lot about, you know, Mayfield's throwing. Daniel Jones had much better. Mm. He's definitely not, definitely not accurate. So he has a better chance. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'd, like, you know, I'd love it if he went to – he wants to be on a playoff contender, right? Uh, of course. Uh, yeah, I know he wants to. Send him to the Panthers. <laughs> Send him to the Panthers. You can have Mayfield again. Well, actually, it's <laughs> not Mayfield awesome. anymore. It's, it's, it's Darnold. And Darnold actually looks better. Uh, Darnold actually looked better. Well, he had to play his heart out. I mean, he's – you know, any if you're playing quarterback for the Panthers, you're just you're thinking about career. You're not thinking about the team. Yeah. Um, this is a little bit of a tidbit of news. Jamar Chase is finally going to be expected back this week. Uh, you know something? Even though Higgins did well, I think Higgins does better if Chase is there. I, they, they work better as a tandem, like kind of like Waddle and Hill. You know. Are on yeah, the on the bigger. Dolphins. I think yeah. it's better. I think it's better for Higgins and bigger, better for Chase if both those players are are there. Just to complement each other? Because you know, you know, the free safety doesn't know what to do. Oh, who should I cover? <laughs> who should right. I double? Who should I double team in this play? You know, I don't know. So it's you know, but you see, with Higgins, he. I mean, Higgins is good enough. He can. I mean, you saw him double. You saw him catching balls with double coverage. Higgins is a. He's a good receiver. He's he is. He is. He is a stud. He's no question about it. Higgins is a, yeah. is a stud. A different kind of stud than Chase is, though. Uh, Oh, they're both good. Yeah. They're both good. I put them in the same yeah. pile. Like, you know. Yeah, different kind of player, but yeah, I mean, it was rumored that he chased was going to come back last week, and then yeah. you know, it, uh, 
I don't say last minute, but then it was, he was ruled out. And I'm like, well, he'll definitely be there next week. You know, they're facing the Chiefs this week, so they're going to need to score. I mean, I'm not sure if Mixon's coming back. Yeah, there's, there's rumblings that he made. He's trying to come back, but I think he's still in concussion protocol. So, I mean, they're going to need all their firepower they can get. And they're going to the Chiefs, you know, take on the Chiefs. So, um, the Chiefs are hoping, they can... uh, they, to get Tony back, as a matter of fact. And we got to talk about Sky Moore. Sky Moore is no longer returning punts because he fumbled a punt. Uh, he muffed a punt. And, uh, so he's, uh, been taken off the punt squad, but, but Reed, Reed, I guess, felt sorry for the kid and, uh, he was catching some balls out there. Um, I put him out, I put Sky Moore out there instead of, uh, Mooney. Yeah, <laughs> didn't, agreed. didn't, didn't get, uh, didn't get the points that we actually wanted from, him, but, ah, uh, I think if you have Sky Moore, I think he's, I have to say he's droppable at this point. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it depends on how, uh, how big your rosters your rosters are, but well, it's just the, I mean, the, the I mean, uh, it's, it's a good stash option to have. I mean, you don't you don't know what's going to happen toward you know, as he toward the end of the year. He's I mean he's getting the I forget what he did on uh, Sunday, but he um he was getting targeted. So I mean I think he's uh, he maybe worth maybe worth six the targets. Yeah, I guess yeah. Okay, I won't drop him. Ignore what I said. I won't drop him. It's just that you're kind of waiting for the. Breakout, but I just don't think a breakout's gonna happen. Not with the Chiefs are <sighs> just just too many miles to feed. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, you got yeah. you got all yeah. this Scantling, you got Kelsey, you got yeah, <laughs> Juju. <Jude. Jude. laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, even Justin Watson was getting some Watson there. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's. So, and now you got gonna get, gonna get Tony in there, and uh, I dropped Tony in one league. Yeah, I I just don't. <laughs> I don't trust him. Excuse me. Uh... Sean McVay says he didn't, he says, I don't think I broke my jaw, so I'll be fine. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. He got hit by one of his players trying to get into the game. That was awesome. <laughs> he got hit with a helmet. That was Guy awesome. was putting on his helmet and he just got you know, whacked. Like, I mean, right. pretty hard too, man. He's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, you could tell he was choking up by it. But he got, I know. He got, he, he got hit pretty hard. He looked like he was nearly in, you know, it's like, saw stars definitely there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Did. Yeah, I was yeah. surprised he didn't uh, he didn't break anything. That was a nice nice hit there. So, yeah. <laughs> so a little a little non fantasy levity to put into the show. Absolutely. Uh, we we got to talk about this stuff, but um, uh, this is fantasy relevant, and we've got to talk about now. At the at the top of the show, I played a clip of uh, Mike White, one of his uh, one of his uh, scores, and uh, completed uh, twenty two of twenty eight passes, three hundred fifteen yards, three touchdowns, and the Jets win over the Bears. Mike White, what are we doing with him? <laughs> yeah, he looked. Uh, I mean, everyone rose to the occasion with Mike White behind center. He kind of doesn't bode well for uh, Zach Wilson um, mm. and his future there, whatever that is. But um, yeah, I mean, that offense was clicking. I mean, Garrett Wilson was. I mean, he had that fluke play when that one uh, the defensive back got. I think he hurt his, broke his foot, maybe even. Yeah. And, um, you know, he got he caught that one touchdown, but so I mean, he threw for. With 300 yards or so, and I mean, he looked—he looks really good. The offense was clicking, and yeah, gotta give him props for that. I mean, Not you know, only that, against Chicago. This was but, in this was in this was in a pouring rain. This was in a real heavy rainstorm. I mean, the, the it was just. I, you could even see it in the, you know, it, like certain camera angles. You know, you know it's raining, but there's a certain camera angle you have to see to see exactly how much it's raining. You know, when they show a puddle or something. Mm-hmm. Man, you were seeing bubbles on the puddles there, man. It was like, uh, yeah, yeah. Was, it's still, it was that, I mean. that's that's a pretty raging uh, rainstorm. He's doing all that. Whereas. You know what? I bet you Zach Wilson, if he was in, they probably would have won the game, but you know, it would have been one of these sort of like slog fests where it's like bears and, you know, it, it kind of be, they wouldn't be pulling away from the bears. It'd be like tight. The bears would be still in it by the fourth quarter. Slog fest <laughs> type of thing if, if Zach Wilson was in. I bet the, yeah. the Jets would probably still win, but. It wouldn't be as clean and nice as, like, like, like you got to hand it to Mike White, too. You know, the guy just comes off the bench. I don't care what team he is. Okay, the Bears are, you know, well, no team in the NFL is easy, right? I mean, I mean, I right. talked about the Texans earlier. I mean, we don't know what's <laughs> going to happen with Deshaun Watson next week. I mean, they were bad. Texans were bad, which is not a, which right. is kind of a lethal combo when you're going up against the Dolphins. But, I mean, the Bears, I mean, the Bears are, the Bears are pretty strong enough. And, uh, 
But, but Mike White to just come off the bench and throw 50 and 50, you just don't see that. I mean, you do you? I mean, no, I don't know. trusting his weapons. And, uh, I was reading some articles in the New York papers to see what they were, they were saying about him. They, they, mm-hmm. they are just looks confident. Looks like, you know, and also readers comments about, uh, Mike White too. They're all like thinking, you know, should have been, well, of course they're all negative. Well, I should have been in there ages oh, ago. Oh, of course. <laughs> Everyone knows that now, of course. You know he should have been there, but yeah. you, know, you got to give. You know, you know Zach Wilson is going to start. I mean, they have too much invested in him not to at least see what he can do or not do. And mm. you know, he showed he couldn't do it. Then he kind of ruined his stature with the team. And now, you know, Mike White comes in and plays great. And I don't know if you're going to see Zach Wilson the rest of the season, but um, well, they say he's you know, going. They they say that he's going to just uh, take over. But can you tell me what the yips are? What are the what yips? Mean? I hear. Well, I mean, I saw this uh, that that Zach Wilson has the yips. I don't oh, know what has, the yips are. It's like uh, being um, like nervous or scared of every little thing. So maybe uh. a pass rush or just anybody around them that surrounds him when he gets in the pocket. So he gets a little nervous and he does, he has uh, some nervous, um, sort of looking for uh, events that happen words afterwards, <laughs> none of which are good, unfortunately. So All right. He just, he just can't handle the pressure about him. Like, so, so uh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just like, like, like seeing ghosts, that sort of thing. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Same concept. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. But, uh, Mike White, uh, they haven't like committed to Mike White for, as the franchise quarterback, but no. uh, next year is next year. I don't see if if Mike White, you know, if he goes far in the play, I can't see them. I can't see them pulling Mike White if he go if the if the Jets manage to go far in the playoffs. Um, right, hard, yeah, hard to do that. Um, yeah, s- and they get a s- decent matchup this week against Minnesota, who uh, can't stop the pass. So I think Mike White have another good game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this week, you know, in theory, he should. So I mean. He gets on a roll. I mean, it'd be hard to pull him out of there. Yeah. Uh, we just, oh, we've got, uh, uh, there has been a, uh, oh no, there wasn't, I thought there, I thought we had an update. We don't. Okay. Um, but it does, uh, involve the San Francisco 49ers. Injury. Injury. Yep. Ellen Mitchell. Out of the season with knee injury. Yeah. Um, MCL. just, uh, you know, they did a pie graph on the, well, with an actual pie on the, <laughs> on the on the telecast, and mm-hmm. uh, Elijah Mitchell get, was getting a pretty good piece of the piece of the offensive pie there. Now he's going to be out for the season. So who gets the other pie now in the backfield, or will they just mm-hmm. add pile on more for uh, McCaffrey? I can't see them doing that. They don't want to wear they don't want to wear the tread off um, McCaffrey. I don't think. No, I think they're managing managing snaps and touches for McCaffrey. And now that there's a report that he has uh, some knee, knee irritation. Oh yeah. So yeah. So he, I, I doubt we're going to see him practice much, uh, you know, the rest of the season. But they'll, they'll probably play um, in games. But I don't think you know they're going to start being careful what when they use them and how they use them. Well, they can't and, use use check. So who's the other guy? Uh, Jordan Mason. Oh, Jordan I mean, Mason, he, of course. Yeah, he played. He played a little bit, and I think he'll get a little run. I think if D- if Debo is healthy, which is a whole other issue in itself. If he's healthy, he'll get some. He'll get some plays. You know, um, get some ball carries, and we'll, we'll see what you know what they're gonna How do. How come but I don't see Mason on the waiver list here? It's a very good question. He should be. You're absolutely right. He should be. Yeah, he should be up there. <laughs> I see some other guys I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch, but um, we'll get into that shortly. But yes, yeah, I think he should be in there. Um, but I mean, he's at least you know number two guy, and he got some run uh, on Sunday when when Mitchell was out. And McCaffrey was like in and out with that irritation. I, I think he could have, he could have played more, but I think they're just being careful. And, but, um, even still, I think Mason will get some run. Debo will probably get a little bit more, uh, carries if, he can, if he's healthy enough to do so. And I think uh, that offense is full of talent, so they should be okay with Don Mitchell there. Just no matter how they spread the rest of the, the love around everybody else. Mm-hmm. Indeed. So, uh, okay, let's, uh, that's, that's it for the news. So, uh, let's, uh, move right along. Show today is crowded, so we must move quick. Yep. So we're going to get on, and we are going to move quick. We're going to move right on to the quarterbacks that we need to pick up. And, uh, well, we've already talked about Mike Way. He's a QB2. Number one is, uh, Jared Goff of Detroit. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, Jared Goff is kind of in a standard streamer all year. 
Uh, I don't see any problem. I mean, if you need a if you need a quarterback, why not? Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a decent. Uh, he has a good player to have. Um, I mean, he's not gonna probably win you a week, but he'll he'll do um, he'll do enough to uh, lose you uh, lose you a week. Yeah, because we're <laughs> we're we're, we're back to the buys this week, and just to tell people who are on buys are the Cardinals and the Panthers, and that's it. Right, that's it. So you're not. But then in week fourteen, you've got the Falcons, the Bears, the Packers, the Colts, the Saints, and the Commanders. Six teams on by on week fourteen, and week fourteen is a yeah. is a playoff week for some people. Right, that's a huge week. You know, the end of the year, like you said, it could be playoffs or you could be fighting for your uh, playoff life. And yeah, you, uh, you may you may miss a lot of guys, unfortunately. Yeah, so, so fantasy yeah. has got to do something about that because uh, yeah, but I guess fantasy playoffs do start in week fifteen, and then everybody's everybody's in. And, but because fifteen, right. sixteen, and seventeen, you know, is um, yeah, you know, like quarter quarter semis the, and finals. Sorry, like you're on the border of of uh, your playoff. You know, playoff, uh, either seeding or just getting in the playoffs, man. Losing all those guys in week 15 is not, not going to be nice for, uh, for your chances there, you know? That's mm-hmm. why maybe you grab Goff now while you have, uh, if he's available in your league, grab him so you have quarterback to stash, you know, for that week. Yeah. Week 14, yeah. Falcons, that's, uh, well, I mean, you're not going to have, uh, well, you're not going to have Mariotti. You're not going to have Cordero Patterson. You're not going to have, you know, a few guys there. Uh, you're not going to have Drake London. Right. And uh, right. the Bears, you're not going to have David Montgomery. Uh, yeah. Packers, you're not going to have Aaron Jones. Colts, you're not going to have right. Jonathan Taylor or uh, Michael Pittman yeah. or, or Paris Campbell. And the Saints, you're not going to have Kamara, who's not having a really, he's kind of hit into a no. slump, slump lately. Bit, yeah. uh, I mean, he was a bit hurt, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. And then he's not really playing well. That offense is kind of, you know, shuffling yeah. it. Trying to get better, but yeah, he's not. Uh, he's not playing well. Well, obviously, he's doing all right. And then you got the Commanders, and Heineke is running things. I mean, he's not. Uh, he's not the greatest. Uh, he's not harming anything of your fan. He's not harming your fantasy guys too much. But uh, um, I think Brian Robinson had a pretty good game for once, and I think uh, actually the running game was looking a little bit better for the Commanders on the weekend. I can't remember exactly, but they did. Uh, they did win, right? Yeah, they did win. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think he had two uh, two touchdowns and only threw for you know, less than 150 yards. And that's kind of like typical for him. So I mean, he's not a great, he's a better NFL quarterback, the fantasy quarterback. But yeah, as a fill-in. But, I mean, unless you have you know, one of the guys off this week, I mean, you're not going to be worried about picking up Heineke, especially if he's off the following, you know. So, um, but I mean, it may be worth it. I mean, he's on our list, but he's, like, down on the list. Yeah, he so, is on the list, but he's no, uh, yeah. And a lot of these names are names that we know, except Jordan Love, of course. But, I, I yeah, Jordan Love, are you going to, you know. I think, do they play Detroit next week? I think, do it is. Do they? No. Is, no. Is, no, who do they play? They play Chicago. They play the Bears. But you've been. Even better, even that's better. Probably, yeah, it's probably even better. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the I mean, Packers. I mean, if if Air, if Rodgers is out, you got Bears. Then you got the bye week, which is well, that might help Rodgers come back. But then they got the Rams. Oh, then they got Miami. Yikes. Then the Minnesota mm-hmm. and the and the season with Detroit. But uh, week eighteen is a non fantasy week. So. Right. I mean, so anyway, so that's uh, the list. Just six quarterbacks on the fantasy pros uh, rankings. Let's move on to running backs. <clears throat> Kyron Williams, number one. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, mm. I, I don't. I don't trust that Rams office. No, game. I'd rather have Hasty. You know? Yeah, but I think. Uh, Travis Etienne's gonna play. I don't think. I mean, he was. You know, they he, they pulled him out. and he didn't come back in. But all signs indicate that he'll be back this week. And I'd be surprised if he's not. So I mean, mm. you know, Hayes is a good handcuff to have, but I, I wouldn't prioritize him. That's for sure. Mm. Um, Tyler Algarer, you like him? I'm not too keen. Yeah. No. no I mean, Cordo Patterson's the guy to have there. I mean, yeah. He's just. I was yours, just the guy. Uh, I mean, he's 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 good, but he's not gonna help you. You know, win any of your weeks. Uh, so I mean, it's more of a fill-in thing, just in case Patterson does get hurt. Or something then it'll be good to have. But otherwise, I'm not touching him. Uh, okay, <laughs> Bam Knight is a guy. Is that they call him Bam? <laughs> yeah, they call him Bam and Bam Knight. So, but his real his his proper name is Zonovan Knight. Uh, you know what? I I don't think he's the guy. I think the guy you want is James Robinson. I think the I, I don't know why James Robinson now this is the weird thing is James Robinson was a healthy scratch. I don't know why that is. Uh right. it, it, it could be anything. It could be like he had a cold or something like that. You never know. Right. right? Very true. Um so they could have been they could have held him out without 
you know, making too much news about it. And, and so we don't know the reason, but uh, James Robinson's too good to not be, be you know, um, you know, put to pasture here. I think Zonovan Knight was right. the only option they had, and he played well. Uh, in fact, what did Zonovan Knight get? Let's take a look. Zonovan Knight. Uh, 14 carries, 69 yards, no touchdowns. No, he looks good out there. But he looked I mean, good. Used, yeah, he used Ty Johnson as the pass catching back mm-hmm. Yeah, after Carr was gone. So, I mean, you know, I think, you know, it's saying that Carter has a you know, ankle sprain. They're not sure how severe it is. But I agree with you. I think uh, James Robinson will be back. And it'll probably take over the role. And then, but I also believe that it's going to be like a three-way committee. Yeah. Which, I mean, I'm not sure how you're going to trust any of those guys. I mean, you want to trust Robinson, but you don't know what's going on there. I mean, if he's they send him out, there has to be a reason. Hopefully it's not, you know, um, disciplinary or personal. Hopefully it's something else. But uh, even way, it's hard to trust any of those guys. But uh, anyway, it's just to uh, for Carter owners here, he's uh, treated as day to day, but he has a chance to play against the Vikings. The Vikings that'll be a real test for Mike White, won't it? Absolutely. So uh, yeah. So uh, moving right along, uh, the usual suspects are on the list here. You got Madison, McKinnon, Henderson, Cook, the usual names. Gainwell, we always see him on the list. Uh, yeah. So all the rest are pretty much the regulars that we see every week on the waiver list. Uh, are there any of those guys that we? I think I think I might like McKinnon a little bit more uh, of the regulars this this week. Yeah, I agree. I, I think he'll be like actually my my top pickup if he was available, just because especially for PPR leagues, because you know he gets the ball. I mean, with no CH there, uh-huh. uh, McKinnon's going to get the ball. In pass, passing situations, and um, you know, Pacheco is still the run guy, but uh, I, you know, they trust McKinnon, so I think he's he's somebody that should be rostered in more leagues right now. Yeah, uh, Pacheco actually had a not bad game. He scored. I know that. Uh, I didn't get. I don't have the full numbers here. Where are they? I said Pacheco. There he is. Uh, let's see what the numbers say. The numbers say that uh, twenty-two carries, sixty-nine years. Well. Mm. That's only about three yards of carry in it. So, yeah. uh, that's not too great, but he scored. That's the main thing. And he caught one pass and, uh, 15 fantasy points. You know, that's, that's, you know, but you really can't trust that back. You can't even trust the downfielders. I don't know. The only guy you can trust is Kelsey, seems like. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I that mean, means they're more of like, you know, you're the wide receivers there are more. Uh, you know, wide receiver three is then, you know, in your lineup and the running backs here are probably be like your flex plays and the best you could hope for. I mean, it's, you hope they hit. And if they don't, then. I know. Uh, Ju- Juju you know, was back uh, and he got three targets. Right. I think they're trying to be careful with them because that, that concussion you know, was pretty nasty. So I wouldn't. I, I mean, suppose, uh, but. You know, uh, I mean, they let him in there, but he didn't. Like you said, he only had three targets and he didn't play that many. He was on that many snaps on it either. I well, I guess you could take, count, take a look at the snap count to find out if they were putting them okay. on light duties or something. Do you have a snap count? Mm-hmm. Or th- that, usually no. that usually doesn't come out until the middle of the week. Right. Yeah, so. It'll be interesting to see. I can't imagine it was that many because I didn't see that much of them out there. And he, yeah, I know. I remember him making a couple of uh, good, more important plays out there, but overall, he was not being uh, utilized that much. Right. You know, uh, but, yeah, I trust McKinnon. Everybody else on this list, I yeah, I'm not only only person I would actually have mild interest in would be Dontrell Hilliard, just because he's a nice oh, yeah. handcuff for for Henry. And he gets the pass catching work there. Um, yeah, I'm not interested in Ch- Chuba Hubbard, Matt Breida. No, he, he's just, uh, I mean, he's Barkley's backup, but he's nothing special. James Cook, maybe, but I mean, yeah, you know, his, that offense is so. Again, it's a cuff. Different. He's a yeah. handcuff. And... Yeah, exactly. Un- unaffected, he's unaffected by Naeem Hines, I will say. I mean, it was... Right. Hines got a little bit more play um, in the last yeah. game, but a little bit, not much, just a little. Bit. Yeah, Ty Johnson on the list there. He might be a th- he might be a thought. Um, uh, w- uh, well, let's 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 talk about this New York Jets. Well, I guess we don't need to because Carter is going to be back. I think. Well, he's yeah, day to day, but yeah, know, the, they, Min- they, the Minnesota they game is so already. big they'll they'll try to get him back because the Minnesota game is huge. Yeah. I mean, don't forget the Jets are in a division with uh, you know the doll. I mean, they're looking at. At a wild card, they're. I mean, but they got to They got to keep their eyes on the on the division too. I mean, the, the Bills aren't playing all that great. Well, it, but Miami is playing great. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. such a tough division that you know the teams are in. You know, right? Yeah, it's a tough division, right? 
just the defense is you know playing great and yeah you like to see the offense you know kind of match that and they did obviously in sunday you know, hopefully they can do that against minnesota mm. um and we'll see what they can do you know i mean i still don't trust that much really that backfield i i worry about what you know if carter does come back i mean what what's going on with robinson how much play does other guys get then if those guys are healthy yeah i mean it's all oh, it's a crap shoot but mm, yeah i wouldn't invest that much fab in it i mean it'd be like low low on my I mean, fab dial to do. <clears throat> yeah, the problem. You know what the problem is. Uh, you know, there is a flaw in my philosophy. Uh, my fab, well, like I should be in in a lot of ways. I should be like Joe Bond a little bit more. Cause, well, Joe Bond is is you know he's he is no maverick. No way. He does not do maverick things. <laughs> Whereas yeah. I, he hates my he hates my fantasy football philosophy. We we are diametrically opposed. And, uh, so, but, but he has good points where he kind of sticks to the tried and true. He doesn't, uh, whereas I might have won a matchup. Uh, in fact, it was the league we were in. I might have won my matchup if I was, if I wasn't so, uh, like I put in Sky more, I could have picked up somebody off waivers who was more likely to get, you know, enough points. But, you know, yeah. you lose by, you lose by three, two points or whatever it was. Two or three points are lost by, you, you, hmm. you know, it's, 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 it's luck when it Sometimes, you know, say this. Uh, yeah, I want to stand with them, you know, points like that. But anyways, let's, uh, bring in, uh, Davis Peng and Peng's picks for week 13. Peng's picks with Davis Peng. Hey everybody, this is Davis Pang, writer for Fantasy Six Pack, and this is my Pang's picks for week 13. And my first talking point is to talk about that Josh Jacobs finish from last night. Not only did it end Seattle Seahawks, it also probably ended a ton of fantasy matchups that came down to the wire. And Josh Jacobs not only probably caught them up and won it for them, probably sealed the fates of many managers up. And why am I talking about Josh Jacobs? And it's because he's a dead zone running back. Now let me talk to you guys about this. What's a dead zone running back? A dead zone running back is a running back draft two teams rounds three to round eight now i know the definition can vary from people some say round four to round seven whatever the case may be it's all moderately the same but here's the thing the dead zone running back isn't something that always existed it is something that is created by the fantasy community the original dead zone was a bunch of running backs on their second and third teams running backs that had a lot of their tread worn off right good examples of these guys would be demarco murray uh lashawn mccoy fred jackson steven jackson you know todd Gurley post round Rams. Guys like that were the definition of dead zone running back. Now, we don't have those guys anymore. We don't have guys in their 28s, 29s, 30, 32. We don't have Adrian Peterson on his, you know, 15th team. What we do have now are a bunch of running backs that are 25 and younger. We have a bunch of running backs that don't have 300 touches like the olden days with Adrian Peterson, DeMarco Murray, Fred Jackson, Steven Jackson. We have a bunch of guys that can have longer careers. So what does that mean in the long run? What that means is to change our narrative on running backs. Now, I know a big portion of it was, well, when were we going to have a three down back? Well, I'm not drafting Nick Chubb because he shares a backfield with Kareem Hunt. I, you know, Josh Jacobs now has competition with Amir Abdullah and Zamir White. But here's the thing. What running back doesn't share the back? Every single running back out there right now is only running the ball about 70%. If they're lucky, maybe 80% of the touches. The majority of them are in timeshares more than you think. So I would say that narrative goes out the window for me right off the bat. So what should you be looking for when it comes to your running back? Well, I would say it's the same things that you look for in your wide receiver. Are they on a good offense? Is the O-line stout? Are they high powered? And if so, then boom, you have yourself a running back that you could draft. It doesn't matter what round he's in because it's at the end of the day, you have your, the notes that this team will go and actually score points. All right. It doesn't actually have to be a talented running back to do so. And if you're wondering, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, look at Devin Singletary. Well, he's not the most talented running back, but because he's on such a high powered offense, he's getting his ass down the field. And that's all that matters. So I would say start from there and then work your way down. If you're, if you're going to sell this narrative that I need a three down running back, then you're going to end up with Damian Pierce, who's on a bad offense that cannot go all the way down the field, that gets stuck, and he's the one that has to try to bail them out when they can't do anything, which is crazy. Anyways, guys, that's enough of my rants for Pink's Picks on uh, Week 13. I will see you guys next week for Week 14. You guys have a great one. Bye. Yeah, uh, I agree to a point, but I mean, we, I mean, he kind of glossed over, uh, you know, the elephant in the room, Donta Foreman, you know? <laughs> and uh yeah. and, and we got to talk about cordero patterson too you know um i mean that's those guys are those guys are doing it and they're on, not on great teams 
Yeah. But, uh, uh, so, I mean, yeah, Damian Pierce is, you know, he's in the slumps, obviously. Yeah, but, it's a rookie wall, I think. Plus, you know, their team's uh, not good. So, yeah. I mean, he's, so he's got you know, that one right. Shambles. I mean, yeah, they, they, the Texans are so bad. I mean, you know, I mean, Travis Etienne, he's not on a great, great team. But, I mean, he's young. Okay. So, but, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Josh Jacobs. I, I still don't, I st- still don't kind of understand the dead zone, even though he explained it. <laughs> 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 I, I, don't, I don't, did you follow that? Did you follow what the dead zone is? Try to, yeah, try to, bit. I don't know. I mean, I, I, yeah, kind, a little bit I did. I didn't yeah, get, I think I'm, it's kind of a, you know, a philosophy of, you know, the way you draft your running backs. I mean, everyone has their little philosophy to do it. If you want to go high end with running backs, you wait till, you know, grab your receivers and let's uh-huh. say you grab Kelsey and a top end receivers and then grab a group of running backs that fit into that so called dead zone or yeah. oh, okay. zone, you know? So, I mean, then right. you're, you're taking chances on who you pick and sort of a hybrid zero RB thinking. Right. Yeah. A little different, but yeah, I mean, it's plus you want to. Yeah. You got to worry about who you're picking and, you know, the philosophy behind their offense. Like you know, Dave was saying, and Jacobs is being the bell cow there. He's not really faced with that much competition, yeah. even though beginning of the year we thought he was going to be. Uh-huh. And, you know, Chubb is um, you know, Chubb is the man in Cleveland. Cream Hunt hasn't really done much this year. And, you know, I mean, it does catch the ball in the back a little bit, but Chubb is, uh, I mean, he's, he's freaking amazing. I mean, that guy's an amazing ball, amazing running back. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of, you know, teams that have a, a bell cow back that still, get, I mean, even like Derrick Henry, he still gets the ball majority. I yeah. mean, somebody, Dr. Hilly doesn't get ball that much there. So that's right. It's, uh, and Dr. Know, Foreman, I mean, it's, it's right now, Dr. Foreman, Hubbard is not, is he, is he relevant? Hubbard? Yeah. I don't know. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think. So. I mean, he's he's there. I mean, he gets he's the, you know the the backup behind him, and he gets some run, but he's not somebody you can trust at all. That's for sure. Yeah. So Foreman's doing all right, and he's only twenty seven, so he's all right. Well, yeah. twenty seven, I guess, is old these days. I don't know. That's right. Yeah, they don't waste any time. They just run those running backs to the ground and yeah, move on to the you know, next. Exactly. Assume. That's why they don't draft them. They don't use any draft, high draft capital on them. They just, just pluck people off the wire or, um, you know, use the third or four round pick on them and just run to the ground and yeah. go to the next guy. Saw so yeah. that guy from the Rams, remember? I yeah, forgot Gurley. his name. Yeah, Gurley, yeah. Yeah. Ran, ran him yeah, into ran, the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they did. Two years, two years of a, two years of good production, phew, gone. Right. Um, yeah, where is he now? Who knows? Who knows? No, yeah. he's out of the league. Right. Uh, yeah, we, exactly. we, we, we've seen a, we've seen a couple of, uh, burnouts, quick burnouts, haven't we, uh, over the yeah. years? You know, Gur- Gurley's yeah, a, Gurley's a prime example of the, of yeah, early burnout. He's a perfect example, absolutely. Uh, Devonta for, uh, no, I mean, uh, Devonta Freeman, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, especially his stature. He wasn't that, he was like a stocky guy. He's not really that built. I mean, he's not that big, but mm. he's a short, stocky guy. I mean, they're trying to run him, and he plus he call out a pass as well. And yeah, they used him until uh, they couldn't use him anymore. They just you know yeah. moved him along, and he went to Baltimore for a bit. His was a bit was more. His 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 down downturn was a bit more gradual, but yeah, uh, true. But interesting. Well, we've got to move on. We must move on. Uh, wide receiver Traylon Burks tops the list. What do you think of that? Yeah, I'm surprised he's still on the list after yeah. you know after 111 yards in, in week 11. Um, I'm surprised he didn't get snapped up a little bit more. Then he came back with you know four catches for 70 yards, put a lot of snaps. I mean, he is the he is the go-to guy uh, in the passing offense. That's so, it, it, well, I know, yeah. but uh, yeah, passing offense. What passing offense? Did you know that <laughs> the the Titans are are second to last in of in in passing offense? So I'm not surprised. It's well, it's, the Bears are the bottom, and yeah, so no the and uh, and Tennessee are, are are number thirty-one in passing offense. So is Burks? I mean, I kind of considered last week a bit of an outlier. I don't know what I mean. The week where he went over a hundred yards, I don't think he went. I bet he didn't go over a hundred yards. Traylon Burks. But everybody's all excited about this Trey Lumberg's guy on an offense that is second to last in passing. <laughs> Why? It doesn't make uh, sense I, to me. I, I still, yeah, I think the you know arrow arrow's pointing up for Burks. I, I still take a chance at him. And the still think it's boom. There. I think it's boom bust. Really, I really don't. I don't think you're going to get anything consistent. I mean, yeah, maybe uh, not. But 
As a is your wide receiver three, I think I I have take a shot at him. All right, rest of the season. Yeah. Okay, you got seventy yards. All right, scoreless. He still didn't score a touchdown. Uh, yeah. Ended up as WR thirty seven. Okay, it's not bad. It's not great. Six targets, four Wire catches, receiver. four catches for seventy yards. Okay, he's yeah. gonna need. He's gonna need a lot more catches than that. I mean, but that. Uh, I mean, he had seven catches on eight targets uh, in the game against Green Bay. So. And he still ended up as WR13, but no TDs. You gotta get, you know, TDs are the money, right? That's why we Absolutely. like Christian Watson. <laughs> I don't know how long he's gonna keep that up. I mean, that, well, I don't like to, I never, I don't like to say never say never because, but I mean, I don't know. Kids, kids playing good. Kids playing good. Yeah, it makes an impact. All right, let's move on with this list here. Paris Campbell was on the list last week. Uh, yeah, they're playing tonight, so I'll uh, we'll see how that's going. Right. It's so, not a bad PPR option. I mean, he's yeah. playing better with Ryan there. So it, it's, uh, he's, you know, well, like I said, we'll see what he does tonight. I made the call, but I'd, I'd rather have, uh, I mean, I can see him being the next guy on the list for sure. All right. Um, Zay Jones, no, not for me. Uh, what I like, you know, who I'd be the the next guy on the list where I'd put it number one, Donovan Peoples Jones. Yeah, I think I think he didn't do anything yesterday. He didn't do anything yesterday. Yes, yesterday is yesterday. But I mean, uh, I don't want to start talking like Skip Bayless here, but (laughs) (laughs) Skip Bayless. (laughs) uh, Yeah, Donovan Donovan Peoples Jones. I mean, you know, he's got a quarterback here. He's yeah, got a quarterback. True. He's got a quarterback that's going to get him the ball. I think that's why a lot of people ha- were, were picking up uh, Donovan Peoples Jones. Not because, well, I think he'll do better than, uh, you know, uh, blah, 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 blah. What's that? Coop. Cooper. Cooper. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what, how that, uh, you know, how that offense is going to look with, I mean, it, Cooper it's, dropped it's a terrible that. pass. Did you see this pass yeah. that Cooper dropped? Goodness sake. Oh, yeah. He's, he's kind of known for that, but. Yeah, I'm not sure who Watson's going to focus on as his main target. I mean, he loves going to the tight end, so I think Najoku will be someone who I'd be you know, looking to see if he was available. He probably isn't, but um, he likes going to the tight end, so I look for Najoku. And I'm not sure if uh, you know Donovan People Jones or Cooper would be the main guy there right now. I mean, if we, there's so much unknown right there now with them. It's hard to tell what, what Watson do, but you want to be... You want to be ahead of it, so I mean, I would pick him up to see what happens. But I agree. I think I read. I think I agree with you there. Is uh, People's Jones ahead of Zay Jones? Sure. Yeah, but not, but not ahead of Trillin <laughs> Had to throw that in there. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, no, uh, Houston. Okay. Nico Collins. No, nobody from Houston. No, thank you. I agree. Uh, Elijah Moore. Yes. Yeah. The offense is, mm. has the upside to produce, and you know, Garrett Wilson looked good. And more when he got like two catches, but one was a touchdown. So yeah, yeah, like that. You get you know, Corey Davis. I don't know if Corey Davis played. He made did he? Might have. I don't think so. No, he he could have. Um, anyway, no, but uh, things are going good. I mean, you can even get. Uh, uh, you know, we'll be talking about tight ends pretty soon, but there's a tight end on the Jets that's uh, that's looking good again. Right. Uh, Michael Gallup on Dallas, like we were talking about, that uh, he's starting to move up. But you know, there's this thing looming. Well, they say if if Odell Beckham comes to the Cowboys, it won't be until mid December. So you're gonna get at least two to three weeks of more of Gallup without any you know issues there. But Gallup kind of looks like he might be moving forward i don't know yeah i agree he's getting there you got like we talked about yet more targets and uh a little production so i think that's his upsides uh you know looking a lot more clear now so i yep. and i'm not really worried about Beckham right now i mean he's like you say he's not gonna come back to mid-december he still has to get you know the playbook and get in shape i'm i'm not even worried about Beckham. that's more for the playoff run than it is for fantasy right um we have uh we also have Isaiah McKenzie here on this list, Michael Gallup, and uh, hmm. Marquez Valdez Scantling. Hmm. Not, oh, not keen, not keen. Right. Jameson Williams is this rookie that's supposed to be coming back. I don't know. It's still, I don't know. It's Amon Ross St. Brown. Amon Ross St. Brown's really good, isn't he? He's a good player. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he is awesome. They're making uh, Jarek Off look a lot better, that's for sure. He is. He's really yeah. good. Good uh, Good receiver. Uh, good guy to have. He'll be, he'll be definitely, I, I don't know. I, we'll have to see how, it'll be interesting to see what his ADP will be next year. Uh, if he continues this pace, he's definitely, I don't know, he's he's getting, he's inching closer and closer to top 10, you know. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the WR1 for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Jameson Williams, don't know about him. Sky Moore, uh, WR11, a bit of a surprise to me. 
But, I mean, he did get more targets than, uh, but as you say, the targets thing might, Juju might have been on light duties. We don't know. We have to see the snap counts, but we don't know what the snap counts are because snap counts don't come until, until Wednesday or Thursday or something like that. So we don't know. Unless you counted them yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can go right ahead. I, you know what? Yeah. I don't, I don't know how those statisticians do it. Or how do they, how do they get those stats? Where do they get those stats? Those stats are hard to do. I mean, you got to sit there and, I mean, how do you focus on football or anything? You got to be, I, well, maybe, maybe the team does it where somebody on the team yeah. must, you know, keep, keep the count, yeah. you know, right. who's on the yeah. field at every, at every given moment. Like, right. I guess, I guess what you, I guess it would do it. The reason it doesn't, it comes out late is because they got to look at the coach's film, maybe. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and it would be the case because then they can reverse and they can look at it that way. Maybe that's why it takes a little longer. So, I mean, if you have, uh, if you got 32 people doing it, <laughs> <laughs> right. or maybe even uh, like, you know, one guy for every team, like just, you know, right. You could, maybe. You, you could figure it, figure but, it all out. The better people gonna, than I am because I couldn't do that. No, I'll be dead boring. <laughs> but those stats but it's an important stat we want it uh jarvis landry definitely not do not pick up jarvis landry do not i don't know why he's doing it on you yeah and of course okay obj yeah obviously i guess it's kind of appropriate that he's wr13 (laughs) (laughs) that's funny yeah kind of uh Appropriate for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but uh, still, currently, he's got the FA on there, free agent. But but we could be seeing a DA all pretty soon. Never know. Uh, right. Terrace Marshall, I would put him up the list a little bit more. I mean, because uh, Darnold didn't look too bad, and I don't know well, how did he do this week. He didn't do much. The Panthers won yeah, though, they... didn't they? Did they not? No. Oh, yeah, Panthers won. Much yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's take a look at. Uh, yeah, Gee, one catch for eight a yard. That's how come I have Demarcus me. Robinson so low? Oh, I know why. He didn't do anything. <laughs> he did something <laughs> the previous. He got 128 yards in week 11 against Carolina, but against Jacksonville, Demarcus Robinson. Oh, he's, he's injured too. Yeah, he was in and out. Uh, he looked like a guess. I guess he's not such a good pickup. Maybe Van Jefferson might be a better pickup. Yeah, maybe. I don't know that. Corvette situations kind of, I mean, the whole offense is something I just want to ignore. I just don't want any part of it. Yeah, neither do I. It's hard, hard to trust it. You know, it's hard to trust it with what's going on there. And I just better really just avoid it altogether. Yep. Um, Hunter Renfro is still out. You're not picking on him up yet. He's got, he's still got a couple of weeks to go. So I'm just looking at some other options you might have. Just, Alec Pierce is, you know, he might be, he might be an option. You got eight targets against Philadelphia. Well, I don't know what he's, he's playing today. So we right. have to see what Alec Pierce does. So you have to kind of take into account that a lot of players aren't, aren't on this list because they're on playing Monday Night Football. So I don't know. So, uh, I guess there's one more thing that we can talk about before. Well, I guess we'll do, do the tight ends, but then we've got to do them quickly. And then there's something else I want to talk about before we close mm-hmm. out the show. Let's move on to the tight ends and, uh, talk about them. Okay. Uh, there's eight of them on the list. Uh, <laughs> who do I yeah. like? I don't like the number one. Foster Moreau? Nope. The number one Maybe I would he's... put is Tyler Conklin, at, who's, who's, who's on this list of TE6. I would have him at number one, I think. I like yeah, Juwan I Johnson, too, but Greg Dolce, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, Dolce isn't doing anything. <coughs> he isn't. He hasn't done anything for a couple of weeks, and that Denver offense, uh, yeah, it's in shambles, and Wilson's playing I'm like, you know what? So, I mean, it's kind of hard to, you know, invest in Dalton Dal- Dal- right now. So, I'd probably stay over for him, but I agree with the Cochran number one option. I think he, I mean, with Mike White being able to actually throw the ball around the field, and Cochran was doing well before when they were passing mm-hmm. the ball a lot. So, that volume will help Cochran. I think he should be boosted number one. I still think Moreau should go number two, though. I mean, he's getting the targets. Yeah. You got, you know, so I mean, but I still take, uh, you know, Conklin first and then Moreau second and probably Johnson third, I'm guessing, but he didn't do anything. And Henry kind of had the fluke, you know, game, you know, and should have had another, another touchdown, but we'll get into that. But I mean, yeah, tight ends are kind of hard to come by right now. So yeah. And there's you know, no, was, uh, you lost Dallas Goddard and there's no next man up. Uh, for Philadelphia, I mentioned that in the blurb view too. Is that where where are those Dallas Goddard targets going to? They're certainly not mm-hmm. going to tight ends. No, definitely not. 
I mean, so we, we've we've lost. So there's a title end that's been just totally eliminated. There's not an X Men up. You know, Stoll didn't do anything. There's this other guy. Well, actually, Stoll didn't get a catch, but some the other guy did. Uh, his name was. I was watching. I was keenly watching to see if a tight end was going to emerge. Uh, for uh, Jalen Hurts, but I don't know. Maybe it was the game script. I don't know. Um, uh, Jalen Hurts. Uh, how many how many pass attempts did uh, Jalen Hurts do? Uh, no. so let me take a look. He did. Uh, no, he was sure. he twenty eight. No. That's not a lot. It's under no. thirty. When you're Most, running the ball like they were, yeah, you don't have to throw the ball. You know, I mean, they're just running down their throat. I mean, he only completed they, sixteen passes. Yeah, didn't have to do much. When you run for 150 and throw for 150, you don't do too much, you know. Yep. So, uh, so let's see who the, the Phil, I mean, I want, I want, I get, I just don't have, I just got, I just don't believe. Okay, it was, I think the guy was Grant Calcaterra. Oh my. That was the name of the guy. He got, let's see, he was targeted once. <laughs> <laughs> caught, no, you could have caught, it. caught it. Uh, yeah, for caught a pass for negative two yards. Sure. Uh, not looking good. Not looking good. So there's, there's really, so there's no uh, Dallas Goddard's gone, and there's no next man up. It's just gonna melt into the rest of the team. Right. All those targets, whatever they are. Where, that, that Quez, uh, Quez Watkins at third wide. I was getting. Uh, he's a there. little guy, though. I mean, I'm yeah, talking about. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about guys that are kind of big. That are. I mean, okay, if Quez Watkins was was you know if he was one of those six foot five guys, he's a little guy. <laughs> so yeah, he's, he's getting some looks. So score a touchdown. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but I, I'm talking about like okay if he. Yeah, if he, if he was a big receiver, then I would kind of count him as like kind of the big, the big, you know, royal guy, you know, like yeah. like like Kelsey and Andrews are, you know, big, the big, you know, well, tight ends, they're big guys, right. they're, they got to do blocking there, that's that's kind of their main job. Yeah. So uh, yeah, there's nobody really else. Uh, Trey McBride, mm, nah. I mean, that's another replacement thing issue going on. Uh, I don't yeah, think plus Jay- he's off this week, you know. So why? Why would you pick him up? If he's off this week, you know. Yeah, he hasn't he hasn't done anything. So why is that? Yeah, only people you're saying Cochran, Moreau, Johnson, uh, maybe Henry if you're desperate. But oh, the other guys. I mean, I wouldn't touch Hooper or uh, even Ingram. I don't know if I would touch him any. No, so maybe he's kind of faded out a little bit. So okay, so that takes care of that. Now we can talk about. And we got five minutes left in the show, so we can talk about little things. Show today is crowded, so we must move quick. Not anymore. We finished the show, but there's something else we got to talk about, Dennis. Let's talk about. Let's talk about Melvin Gordon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Melvin Gordon went to the Chiefs. I mean, the he Chiefs. Looks at the vision, don't he? <laughs> The Chiefs picked the him up. The P- Chiefs picked him up. Uh, uh, sounds like a, maybe a big threat to Pacheco. A big threat to uh, maybe he's a big threat to Ronald Jones. Yeah, I'm surprised we saw Ronald Jones out there. Holy crap! I didn't think we ever see him uh, you know, play this. Year. I was surprised. He's, uh, yeah, I was surprised to see. Yeah, that, but uh, but no, you think Melvin Gordon? You know, is just a you know extra warm body in case something happens. Insurance. Yeah, I agree. I think it's just uh, they signed that practice squad, and he's just going to be there, you know, kind of a case of emergency kind of player. And you know, he's a veteran back; he can he can block. So I mean, he's going to help in that in that realm as well. What I a fall from grace! Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, you fumble the way he was doing it. You don't want any any part of that. So yeah, but I think but I think now he's I mean he's good to have as uh, insurance, I guess. Nothing else. There's always going to be now. He's never. It was never that bad. But I don't know. Times change, times change. You're going to pick any... him up or what? No, I'm not going to pick him up. <laughs> I'll leave him on okay. the wire. And I advise everyone else to do the same. Leave him where he be on the wire. Or okay. if you, or if you, if you, even if you, even if you have him on your roster, you can still drop him, even though he moved to the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Because agree. Uh, a lot of people just, you know, they keep these guys on the roster. Oh, why? Well, I yeah, guess they, uh, I mean, I think right away, if he wasn't, if he wasn't claimed off waivers, you know, he kind of, that kind of mm-hmm. tells you everything you need to know about Melvin Gordon. Right, exactly. I mean, if he was claimed, okay, different story. If he was claimed, okay, yeah, okay, somebody wants him, really wants him. You gotta really want the guy if you think, you know. Um, 
We had we had a guy uh, recently who was uh, playing golf waiters. Who was it? Uh, kind of a, kind of an important guy. Daryl Henderson. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Sam and Jack Williams, which is, you know, that's somebody I thought, when I thought of, I'm sorry, when I heard of uh, Etienne getting hurt, I'm like, oh, that could be Phil Henderson getting brought up, you know, he got, he was inactive, I mean, he just got with the team, so Hasty will be, you know, playing this, you know, last week he played, but Phil Henderson will get some run, but all, all signs show that Etienne's going to play, so I don't think Henderson will be making the impact, but you never know, you know, I wouldn't drop him if I had Henderson, I'd hold on to him if you have a deep roster, you never know what's going to happen. That kind of uh, brings up the Rams. We don't have time in the show. We're in the last minute of the show, but uh, we got to talk about uh, uh, you won't be here next week. Davis Peng will be here next week to uh, fill in for the Fantasy Edge. So you're uh, you're going to get the week off. Yeah, going to Disney. So. Going to Disneyland. Some, yeah. some people have all the land. Going to Disneyland. Yeah. Did you go in the Super Bowl <laughs> or something? That's right. How'd you know? Uh, yeah. yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I don't know. Uh, so it's, it's, I don't know. Maybe you won the Cy Young. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so uh, we will have uh, Davis Peng. So there will be no Peng's picks because Davis Peng will be here. So, But uh, be sure to join us next week on the Fantasy Edge. I'm Richard Spill, fantasy6pack.net. For Dennis Sosik, see you next week, folks. Good luck. <laughs>